Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Reefcraft. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little different than what I've been doing before. We're looking at temperate reef environments as a whole, and in particular, we're going to be looking at Coburn Sound in Western Australia. This is a really interesting environment. Not only does it have heaps of different funky coral species, but you also have large expanses of seagrass as well as macroalgae reefs. And there are so many different species of fish, coral, and macroalgae. And we're gonna look at quite a few different ones today, how they interact, and the little niches and areas that they occupy. And because these are temperate reef environments, the temperature really ranges. So it can get down to about 15 degrees, all the way up to about 25. Let's kick things off with one of the most common species of coral you're gonna find there. This is Duncanopsamia peltata, previously under Turbinaria. This species has an incredibly wide range of places that it can live. It lives in tropical waters, it lives in temperate waters. This species also thrives in turbid environments. If you look closely at these colonies, you can see the silt and sand building up in the body of the coral. Sometimes I even find them almost completely covered. Now, they don't need a lot of light either. They kind of thrive in these low lit environments and you can see these ones are growing in somewhat of a spotlight between the rocky outcrop. However, they are also perfectly fine in higher light situations like you can see here. Also, how cool is that green scrolling sponge? This species isn't really known for its color, but as you can see under the blues, it looks pretty damn awesome. Up next, we're gonna look at a couple of different box fish and puffer fish that you can find in these temperate reefs. This is the Western Smooth Boxfish, and you always find them in the caves and dark cracks and crevices of these reefs. Probably the most common one you're gonna come across is this Weeping Toadfish, otherwise known as a blowy, and check out this footage of them just popping out of the sand. It's really kind of cool to watch. Probably the most striking is this Shores Cowfish, and you will see these ones pop up in the aquarium industry a little bit, but they're pretty rare. And you're not really diving in the southwest of Western Australia unless you come across these guys. This is a globefish, one of the best personalities and faces of any fish species. I mean, look at the eyes and lips on that thing. They literally look like a cartoon fish. Another iconic coral species you're gonna find on these reefs is this, Australophilia wilsoni. I haven't found any super colorful ones around Coburn Sound yet, but this coral has such a wide range of colors and also lives in so many different environments. This is a small juvenile one just growing on the rock. And then here you can see one really puffed up and looking quite healthy. If you look closely, you'll see their tentacles are out during the day. This is pretty common here. I imagine because it's quite silty and the water's always full of food. And you'll find that this is my new favorite toy. Having the UV and blue lights underwater can really help make these corals pop. And always living around this area, you find these Psychozoa colonial sea squirts that are tiny little filter feeders and attach to the rock with the stalk. Heaps of cool invertebrates are here, just like this decorator crab. All these Sally Lightfoot crabs in the real shallow rocky areas. And then when you get down to the open sandy flat areas, you'll come across things like this octopus and enemy. Definitely do not touch these, these kill. And then you also find a heap of tube and enemies that sort of sit on the gradient down to the deeper water. This next one's gonna blow a few people's minds. These are temperate goniopora, and there's actually quite a few different species of them down here. The one you're looking at is goniopora pendulous, and you can tell this by the long drooping tentacles. And it's crazy to think that a coral that you typically see on a tropical reef living in these cold temperate environments and it's even crazier to think there's more than one. This is Goniopora norfolkensis, and this is the southernmost representation of this species. It is literally 1,250 kilometers from the next known colony of this species. And again, look at those tentacles. They are still droopy and they have long parts, but they're not as long as the appendulous. Now I'm highlighting this because this next one doesn't seem to fit the mold of the other two. It has very even tentacle length and they're also all sort of pointed, which really points towards one species of Goniopora, Goniopora pedunculata, which has never been seen this far south ever. Now, I'm gonna get this officially looked at and hopefully we can get this ID properly. 
but for now, it could either be Norfolkensis with slightly retracted tentacles, or we're looking at a massive range extension for another species of Goniopora. And I think it'd be a bit of a miss if I didn't add any of the macro algae that are growing in this area. I believe this one is an ulva. Now I'm not very good with these IDs. These ones always grow in those surf zones on the edges of rocks. And then you've got this one here. It's a dicta odor. And this one sometimes gets this iridescent blue sheen over it. And it's actually worldwide. You'll find this pretty much in every ocean all around the world. And here is that blue sheen really getting shown off. Um, such a cool macro algae. And I've actually seen this one in tanks with people, seahorses, and it is awesome. This red algae, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but it's that very dragon breathy and it sort of forms these big sheets that kind of look like lasagna sheets. And yeah, another wicked algae you'll find around here. While you're looking around these algae areas, you'll also come across zoanthids. And these zoanthids and palithoas are pretty common in these temperate environments and they still contain that palitoxin. This one here is known as Azurus cliftoni uh, or Clifton's zoanthid. These tend to only live in a, a small group of two to three fingers in that little colony. And then you can also find these epizoanthids that kind of colonize a sponge. A little bit rarer to find, but super cool. Tend to find them on jetties and things like that. Another one you can find is these finger zoanthids or sausage zoanthids. They tend to live in these surf zones where it's quite a lot of water movement, but you can also find them deeper. If you ever do a temperate reef tank or something like that, these are an awesome one because they're quite easy to grow. Now moving back to another species of hard coral, and you're gonna get a few different ones of these. These are Turbinaria species. We're first gonna look at Turbinaria reniformis, and these guys have slightly more immersed polyps and a little bit more of a smoother appearance. They also produce more of a flatter plate, but this is also highly variable, dependent on the environment, with also generally a distinct colored margin. You can see here the yellow margin, and then again on this one here. Polyps only grow on a single side of this coral, and they are easily outcompeted by macroalgae, and that's why in temperate environments where macroalgae thrive, you will not really find this coral up any higher and it won't show its other growth forms, which is the more tiered whirling and sort of craziness. Now, this one is a reniformis down the bottom with the peltata and then right above it, you can see here the more crowded polyp structure and more excerpt polyps. This is Turbinaria mesenterina. Like the Reniformis, it only grows polyps on one side. That's a characteristic of Turbinaria. And these ones also, because their polyps stick out a bit more, it gives them a rough and bumpy texture. They also form these crazy whirls and plates and tend to be a little bit more of a cup shape or tiered scrolling structure. Some of the fish species you're gonna find down here are pretty weird and wonderful. This one here is a cobbler. It's basically a type of catfish with a venomous spine on its back. These guys are generally pretty shy and they don't really come out that often. By far my favorite species you're gonna find here are these fingered dragonets. And it's really cool to see them wandering along the seabed. And you can tell this one's a male because of that massive pop spines. They tend to inhabit open areas in between seagrass and reef. It's also a very common sight to see massive schools of pomfrets like you can see here. And because this is a temperate reef environment, it's got a weird mix of both tropical species as well as temperate species. So you do come across things like lionfish that you can see here. This one's a pretty small juvenile doing that defensive thing, flaring out its fins because it knows I'm nearby. And here's an adult hanging above some turban area. These guys are not super common here, but they're becoming more and more common as our ocean warms. Another one becoming more common is these. These are Sergeant Majors. They come down in heat waves, but they don't tend to survive the winter yet. Back to some more temperate species. This is a red lip morwong, super common, super friendly fish, and also bald chingropa. Typically, you find them as juveniles like this, and they move a little bit further offshore when they grow up. And there's also this. This is a super underrated aquarium fish. This is the weedy grub fish. Trust me, they just have an awesome personality. 
Coburn Sound also has some really cool stingrays. This is an eagle ray, and they get that name because of the way they swim. They kind of look like an eagle soaring through the sky. You can also come across a variety of stingery, which are a smaller stingray. On screen, you can see a small shovel-nosed stingery. You've probably noticed in the background of a lot of the shots, a lot of different species of brain coral and Coburn Sound has heaps. So let's just go through a couple of notable ones. Ones like this Dipsastria armicorum, used to be known as a Barabodia or a Favia. They have these really raised polyps with separate walls and deep valleys in between. And around this environment, they tend to be a yellowy greeny color. Probably the most common species you'll find down here is Plesiastria versipora. It's a really unique coral because it's found almost everywhere in the world from tropics all the way down to temperate. It comes in a super wide range of colors from yellows and greens all the way through to whites, reds, grays, browns, everything. And when it's dominant on a reef, it's everywhere. Typically also growing into each other and you can see where one colony ends and the other one starts because of the color. Fafides abdida is also another species you're going to find quite commonly down here. You find it with contrasting oral discs and walls, and it's also like other Fafides, so it shares a wall with the surrounding coralites, just like this Fafides flexuosa. And here's another look at another color morph, probably the more common color morph you're going to find in Coburn Sound. Colastria palauensis is another one, and this is an awesome example of a red version, and to the right you can see a brown one. And then check out this multicolored one once I turn on the UV. Ooh, I still need to work out how to film this properly, but look how awesome that is. Those deep purples and those contrasting oral discs, and you can see in this smaller one again, they're just a really nice coral. And check out this one with the green rims around each of the polyps, again, just such an awesome coral with such a wide range of colors, especially with the contrasting oral disc, it's always going to be a standout. You also get Paragoniastria australensis, which is a sort of maze brain, and you can kind of see it has that meandroid sort of look throughout the whole colony. And for this one, I'm not 100% sure. I kind of thought it was the australensis again, but it doesn't quite fit. If you know this one, please let me know in the comments. And continuing on the not knowing, this is either Chromonethia or Dendronethia. Pretty sure it's Chromonethia. Uh, I've spoken to a few people about these and we all seem to come to the same conclusion. But these are found in those highly turbid areas with lots and lots of food in the water. This is the middle of the day. This is the biggest one I've ever seen on any reef. And it's a shocking shot, but you can kind of see how big it is. That is a fully grown man. This is a soft coral and it's non-photosynthetic, so it's usually reacting to food in the water when it's out, so it can be out during the day, but mostly it's out at night. And when they're not feeding or disturbed, they look like this, they all shrivel up. And then obviously they bloom into something big and beautiful like this purple one. Next, we have quite a weird coral. This is Coscinerea mcneili, and this is actually a cold water coral meaning it's only found in the temperate waters of Southern Australia. And it kind of is the complete opposite because this is its uppermost range. And when I find them, I tend to find them almost bleached out and they seem to always be like this. And be honest, have you ever heard of this coral species before? And just quickly, the final coral I'm gonna show you is this. This is actually a encrusting Cythastria and they're a little bit rarer to find. All right, that's all I've got for today. There are so many other types of coral and fish you can find in this area, but maybe for another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop me a comment whether you like this sort of format. And if you're new here, I make lots of videos in the ocean. I'll put some up on screen now. All right, I'll catch you on the next one.